Okay, so we have 18 slides left. We are starting with slide number 48, 38, um, pink eye, which is also known as keratoconjunctivitis. It's inflammation, infection of our conjunctiva. It is caused by the bacteria Mycoplasma conjunctivi. Should be easy to remember, conjunctivitis, conjunctivi. Signs of pink eye. We're gonna have excessive redness in our, in our conjunctiva, in the pink part, the mucous membranes of our eyes. Epiphora, that means, I, mean, I always say that wrong, epiphora means excessive tearing. Photophobia is sensitivity to light. Blepharospasms are blinking, excessive blinking. Corneal edema, we're gonna have fluid buildup on our cornea, so there's gonna be, like, they're gonna have like a bubble eye. Vascularization of the cornea, the white part of the eye is going to get more red. We're gonna have excessive vascularization there. If you have ever had a an infection, you look like you have a pink eye. The whites of your eyes look very pink because of this. You're going to have discharge. Um, it can be white, yellow, mucousy, um, and then corneal, corneal ulceration or abscessation. So you can actually, like, it can cause defects in the cornea itself and cause an ulcer or an abscess in the eye. It tends to be self-limiting, um, so abscessing and ulceration is rare because it does tend to be, hold on a second, my, tends to be more rare um, because it is self-limiting. The immune system t typically takes care of this. You can treat it with tetracycline um, antibiotics. Usually that is a, tet um, an, a topical antibiotic that you're gonna put in the eye, and you would put eye patches on it to help protect it and um, because they are light sensitive. And there's some, oh, you can actually see an ulcer here on this eye. And then the redness around the eye over here. Contagious eczema. This is sore mouth, also known as ORF. It is an infectious dermatitis of sheep and goat. It is more severe in goat. Um, it is zoonotic, so we need to make sure that we are being careful when we are dealing with these patients. It is a viral um, disease, or it's associated with the viral disease, the pox virus. Um, signs, whoops, hold on. It, signs, uh, you will get crusty lesions around the mouth and nose. Occasionally found on feet, teats, and udders, these lesions. So you're going to get these crusty, nasty um, lesions around the feet, on the teats, around the udders. It tends to be self-limiting. Again, this is one that the immune system takes care of itself. Um, sheep that recover become highly resistant to reinfection. It usually clears up within four to six weeks. You can do antimicrobials. Remember, it's a virus, so that we don't have we can't um, we can't treat it and make it go away with antibiotics. But you can give antibiotics um, to prevent secondary infections. You can do antivirals, um, but those tend to be really expensive, and especially with something that was gonna go away on its own, you really wouldn't do that. You will segregate the infected patient until the scabs fall off, just like when we have, um, well, you guys are all too young for chicken pox, but as long as you have scabs, you are contagious with chicken pox. It is very durable in the vir environment. Uh, proper sanitation and quarantine is imperative to keep it from spreading throughout your herd. Scabs that have fallen off can spread virus, so you really want them quarantined. You can vaccinate it, but be cautious of infecting non-carriers. If, um, if the herd is infected, you will vaccinate dams so they can't pass it on to their young. And you can see crusty lesions here in the mouth and the nose, on the chin over here, all up here around the mouth. It's kind of gross, not going to lie. Blue tongue, we uh, talked about this with cow, um, similar to cows. It is infectious, non-contagious, arthropod-borne 
viral disease. So arthropod born means like tick born. It is transmitted, except it's not a tick. It's actually transmitted by a gnat. I would know this information. This will be on a test. So blue tongue is transmitted by the coelicoids gnat. Symptoms of this are fever, edema of the lips, gums, and tongue. So lips, gums, and tongue will be swollen. Cirrus, so kind of a clear serum nasal discharge, turning mucopurulent. So it's going to start off clear and like a runny nose, and it's going to end up snotty. Um, green, yellow, white. Tongue will ulcerate and necrosis will start appearing. It will start to die because of lack of blood flow. All that swelling will cut off the, will make the, compress the veins and make them smaller so blood flow doesn't fall in. Um, will cause lameness, abortion, um, and mortality is 2 to 30%. So you could actually lose, like if you have 100, 100 sheep, you can lose 30% of them. Um, again, it's not contagious, but those gnats are going to spread it around. Treatment, you're going to do supportive care. Um, it is virus, so no antibiotics are going to treat it. So you're going to treat the fever. You're going to treat with anti-inflammatories. Um, vaccines are not widely, widely used in the States due to a variety of serotypes and lack of safety. So we have too many different strains of this virus so vaccinating it would not be you would have to vaccinate against all of them to prevent it um and there's not um the safety of the vaccine has not been proven um particularly with the number of vaccines we would have to give so what you're going to do is you are going in order to prevent this you are going to control the pests you are going to spray for the nets to make sure they're not there to sp spread it out Transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, also known as scrapie, similar to bovine spongiform encephalitis or mad cow disease. This is a prion disease. It is a reportable disease. Know that. It takes years to show clinical symptoms. They don't show these symptoms until they're in old age, so we don't know that they have it until they're older. Um, so if we butcher them young, then they will, um, they can spread that disease to humans because we won't know they have it until they're older. It affects the nervous system. Uh, black faced sheep are more pr prone to the disease than other sheep. It is always fatal. There is no cure for it. S clinical signs, you're gonna start seeing behavioral changes. They're gonna scratch, they're gonna rub, um, they're going to start head pressing. This is when they go up and they press their foreheads into the wall or into the fence. A lot of animals do this when they have neurological damage. You'll see cats and dogs doing it when they have neuro issues. Ataxia or gait abnormalities. They're going to drunk. They're going to stumble when they walk. They're going to look like they're drunk. They're going to be wobbly. They will have weight loss, but they're still going to be eating. They'll be hungry, they're gonna eat a lot, but they're still gonna lose weight, and they will eventually succumb to convulsions and seizures. Transmission, this is from vertical, so you will pass it off to offspring. Um, in lambing groups who have contact, who have come in contact with the placenta, so it is spread through the, through the placenta, so any, if you have a bunch of lamb that are together and the placenta's there, they can transmit it. Treatment, you're going to call them. It's fatal. We can't treat it. There's nothing you can do. Animals, animals may take two to five years to show symptoms, but usually die within six months once the symptoms start to show. Um, there is a national scrappy eradication program to try to get rid of it because it is zoonotic. It can pass on to people. Remember, that was created by feeding meat protein to herbivores, to ruminants. Ovine progressive pneumonia, OPP. Are you down with the OPP? Sorry. I can't rap either, so that was really bad. Um, hopefully you guys chuckled. <laughs> Retrovirus, or retrovirate, uh, retroviridae virus. There you go.
Transmission is through milk and colostrum with sheep. Goats rarely get infected with this. Symptoms are going to have labored breathing because it's a pneumonia. It's going to affect the chest. Coughing. Productive, though, so they're going to cough on up loogies. Anorexia. They're not going to want to eat. None of us want to eat when we don't feel good. They're going to have fever. They're going to be depressed because they don't feel good. They will, um, they can develop mastitis and show central nervous system signs. So you can start seeing some ataxia, some head pressing, some circling. Treatment, you are going to test the test for it, and then you are going to call positive animals. We don't treat for this. Diseases that we've covered already, we've talked about ringworm. We talked about ringworm in cows, know about it. It can also be present in sheep and goat. Same thing with anthrax. Um, brucellosis, campylobacteriosis, leptospirosis. Remember, leptospirosis is zoonotic. They get it from the urine of other animals. It is um, contagious to all animals. There are different strains for it. We do vaccinate for it. Um, again, it is zoonotic. Um, and it uh, attacks kidney and livers. Does permanent damage can cause death. Salmonellas, salmonellosis, tuberculosis, tetanus. Remember the sawhorse stands with tetanus. Um, review these diseases from the bovine lecture. Go back to bovine lecture, read through them because we've already been through them. Same thing in sheep and goats. Remember that pink eye, uh, infected, infectious keratojunctivitis can be spread by contact, can cause blindness. Entropion, this is a genetic defect. This is when the eyelid rolls in. You can have top or bottom or both, but the eyelids will, f your eyelashes are supposed to be out like this, but your eyelids are going to roll, roll in so that those eyelashes are constantly scraping against the eyeball. Causes a lot of irritation, makes them more prone to things like keratoconjunctivitis. Milk fever, remember what milk fever is. This is a hypocalcemia um, and parturient paresis. This is not being able to give birth. It will cause a dystocia because if you don't have calcium, your muscles can't contract and then you can't deliver babies. And then post-birth, you can have low calcemia and this will cause paralysis. Um, it can cause tremors. We will treat with calcium and maybe phosphorus depending but you have to be careful treating with calcium because you can cause heart failure. They also can get displaced abomasums. Remember, that's when the bottom part of the, uh, the, bottom part of the stomach, the abomasum, it rotates during um, labor. It gets pushed off to the side and it ends up in the right, wrong spot. We have left abdominal abomasum displacement, actually LDA, less, left displacement of the abomasum and right displacement of the abomasum. Right ab displacement of the abdomasum always needs surgery. Left may or may not need surgery. Rickets, this is swollen painful joints. Um, it is an imbalance of phosphorus and vitamin D, uh, calcium, will be covered in feeding diseases. So we already talked about this a little bit. External or control of external and internal parasites. Know your parasites. Know what controls them. Know them very well. These will be on the test, even though they don't go into it very much here. Um, medications that we use or preventatives that we use, these are all dewormers. You have your avermectins, your fenbendazoles, your albendaz albendazole, your levomasole. Be careful if the animal is pregnant or nursing. Some of these can cause abortion or birth defects. Watch for withdrawal times if the animal may be slaughtered. Remember, we cannot give medications, not even dewormers, if they're going to be slaughtered in X amount of days. Internal parasites can be life-threatening. Remember, the liver fluke leads to Black's disease, um, as well as they can cause protein loss they will make them susceptible to other diseases because they don't get enough nutrients and they get sick. Parasites, they are the same parasites as cows and other ruminants, so know them very well. See the lecture of bovine parasite review, although there were quite a few parasites that were not covered in that, in that lecture, so go back and read. Um, significant with small ruminants, you want to know about the barber pole worm. Um, 
the hemonchus contortus. It is associated with anemia. Get yourself very familiar with that. Do the text reading. Sheepkid, you need to know this one. This is the number one loss of economic, or number one cause of economic loss in sheep. It does a serious damage to the skin and the wool. They are wingless dipterans. Um, it is the most widely dispersed, dispersed and important ectoparasite of sheep. It causes skin irritation, puritis, which means itchiness. It causes anemia. It causes weight loss. It causes wool loss. Um, it also, the excrement, excrement from the keds itself, so the ked poop, causes permanent discoloration of wool. It usually occurs in winter and spring, and when they're confined, they are difficult to control. You want to shear moms and shear sheep before lambing so it doesn't pass it on to the lambs. And then you're going to use um, insecticides, several treatments to get rid of them. Seroptes mite, this is scabies or mange, will also cause massive skin and wool damage. There's your coreoptes mites, your sarcoptes mites, that's your scabies. Know your mites, know your parasites.